Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask That Podcast on YouTube. And this time, it's a wrestling magazine. This is Sports Review Wrestling from June of 1980. What we got on the cover here, we got Kim Patera, hitman for Captain Lou Albano. Will Texas be Superstar Graham's graveyard? Women at War, the night they boot... Well, Women at War. Got some more apartment wrestling. Gotta have that. The night they booed Dusty Rhodes, how the American dream became an international nightmare. So this one's just a few months after the last one I did. This one's actually in better shape. The cover's still on. Free booklet, how to build a more powerful body. Locksmith ads. I remember these being all over the place. Of course, the Atlas ad. Now, was, it was a monthly back then. And there's Bill Abner, Stanley Wesson, both on the ballot to go in the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame. I would vote for both guys if I had a ballot. Dave Meltzer, if you're here, send me a ballot. All right, let's check out our rankings. Now, this is a couple months later. Still got Backlund as the WWF champ. Kim Patera, but look, look at this name here. Hulk Hogan. This is 1980. This is Hogan's heel run, his first run in the WWF, where he actually fought Andre the Giant. And I want to say he slammed Andre back then, too. Pat Patterson, Larry Zabisco, Ivan Putsky, Tony Atlas, Alpha the Samoan, Tito Santana, Bobby Duncan, and Sika the Samoan. And over in AWA, Nick Balkwinkle, pure class, pure class. Still the champ, and we got the Crusher, Vern Gagne, Greg Gagne, Dino Bravo, Mad Dog Vachon, Billy Robinson, Superstore 2, which is, um, I'm pretty sure that's Sergeant Slaughter. Jesse Ventura, Chris Crusher, I'm sorry, I thought I said Chris, Crusher Blackwell, Adrian Adonis. And then we're going over to the NWA. We got Ray. Excuse me. Harley Race is the champ. Andre the Giant right below him. Dusty Rhodes, Jimmy Snuka, Kevin Von Erich, Mr. Wrestling 2, Jim, Jumpin' Jim Brunzel, Mil Mascaras, Purple Haze, Mark Lewin. I think this is this is probably pre Purple Haze. Matter of fact, speaking of Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame, Mark Lewin just got in this year. Ric Flair and the Assassin. I've actually met the current day Assassin. Nice guy. For tag teams, number one's Vern Gagne and the Mad Dog, Vachon. Then Rick Steamboat and Jay Youngblood. One of them teams I need to see more of. The Samoans. Ivan Putzkin and Tito Santana. Brian St. John and Stanley Lane. I don't know where they were wrestling. I don't know who Brian St. John is. Ray Stevens and Greg Valentine was a tag team. Okay. Ivan Koloff and Alexis Smirnoff. Mr. Hito and Mr. Sakurada. The Twin Devils and Tommy and Eddie Gilbert. 1980, Eddie Gilbert. And he's teaming with Tommy, who I'm assuming that's his dad, Tommy. Most popular, Dusty Woods, Andre John, Backlund, Ivan Putsky, Rick Steamboat, Mr. Wrestling 2, Pat Patterson, Wahoo, Jack Briscoe, Kevin Von Eric, Most Hated, Larry Zabisco, Terry Funk, Kim Patera, Ernie Ladd, Matt Superstar, Hulk Hogan. Look at that. Hulk Hogan. And this is long before all the other stuff he's done and why he's so hated now. Abdullah the Butcher, Eddie Mansfield, that's a name from the past, Greg Valentine and Baron Von Raschke, and then we got Tony Atlas, Crusher, Mascaris, and Ken Pantera. Small engine repair, a lot of stuff like that, a lot of ads aimed at like adults, like further your education ads. Guaranteed to win $10,000 for an exclusive racing system. Hey, this is one of those horse racing things, maybe Shimmy needs this. The Tadler, which is just information, it's kind of like Kind of like arena reports almost. Who's telling what's going on in their area? Wrestler of the Month is Larry Zabisco. I love this ad. The magic power of witchcraft. And it's supposed to give you all kinds of magical powers and stuff. You would not see something like this in a magazine aimed at kids anymore. Oh, now don't we wish this was legit? Make your own gas for less than 15 cents a gallon. As of recording in my area, and we got fairly cheap gas, gas is $2.25 a gallon. Less than 15 cents a gallon. I would love that. I could fill my tank up for two bucks. I might have to send those in. $15 for the plans. Solar power here. Hey, solar power back in the 80s. A little bit ahead of its time. Then we got the scrapbook, which is the information from back in the years. There's, uh, for those of y'all that know Gorilla Monsoon from WWE, that's how he looked when he was a wrestler. 
Here is Bob Backlund putting a bear hug on Cowboy Bill Watts. There's the great, the great Luthers. We got us a bloody ass Bobby Heenan picture there. Double page spread for back issues. The mail bag and look at that young Bill Dundee. I've met Mr. Dundee two times now. I actually had a chance to sit in the locker room and listen and tell some stories, some old Memphis stories. Really nice man. Super nice. Uh, got a, he got a picture with him, got to talk to him for a little bit. Just really, really nice guy. Now, who is this? Mass Superstar. Okay, that is Bill Eady, Axe from Demolition. All right, here we go. Top wrestlers answered your question of the month. And what's the question? What's the one thing you regret having done in your career? Okay, who are we going to start with? Let's see. Let's start with Dusty Rhodes here. Wrestling with a broken arm in my title match against Harley Race. My stubborn pride wouldn't permit me to alibi my way out of commitments, though others would have. I was champion and had to act like a tamp. Even though a mom like Terry Funk tried to rip my arm out of my socket. Yeah, Ricky Seema will, will looks to be a black eye. Trusting too quickly. When I first broke into wrestling, I thought a lot of people were my friends. I genuinely trusted and respected them like Jones. I'm assuming he's talking about Paul Jones. Then people turned on me, and I got burnt real bad. Now I'm more cautious, a little wiser, I guess. Jerry Lawler. Met Mr. Lawler twice now. Another incredibly nice man. Look how young he is. Forming a tag team with that traitor Bill Dundee had to be my most serious mistake. I thought he could be a trustworthy partner. Little did I realize he'd stab me in the back at the first opportunity. And, well, sad. The recently deceased Bobby DeBrain, he will see what he's got to say. Why ever permitted that scoundrel, that slob, AWA President Stanley Blackburn to suspend me? Well, I don't know. The AWA is my home and Nick Bockwinkle is my champion. This is where I belong. Now Nick and I can go about conquering the entire wrestling world. These were always fun. Always fun. Collector's Corner. Wrestling Magazine. Boxing Magazines. Wrestling Review. Just all kinds of, a lot of ads for in-house products. Jerry Lala, Tennessee Bully. Rick Morton. Not Ricky Morton. This is back when he was still Rick Morton. He was not teaming up with uh, Robert Gibson yet. Steve Regal. Now, this is the original Steve Regal, not the Steven Regal from WCW is now known as William Regal. This is a different guy. This is Mr. Electricity, if I'm remembering right. Jim could have busted Hoffman's leg, but he didn't. That's why Jim Brunzel, when he had a chance to maim Horst Hoffman, jump in Jim Brunzel, AWA fame. He went to, uh, he was team, he probably the high flyers with Greg Gagne. And then he went on and formed the Killer Bees with B. Brian Blair. And the WWF, and then in Herb Abrams' UWF, he was part of Masked Confusion. Bobby Duncan admits, I wrestled a kill, not the win. The blood. An easy match. Almost cost Race's title. A champion must always be on guard. He must never take any foe too lightly. You... You lose a title on your off night when, when you're least prepared. Harley Race nearly lost his NWA title in the exact manner. He almost lost it to Jim Garvin. That, Jimmy, that is Jimmy Jam Garvin. Woo, he still got the poodle. He got the poodle perm originally. Jimmy Jam. Worst member ever of the Freebirds. Or was that Terry Garvin? No, it was Jimmy Garvin. Terry Garvin... The real Terry Garvin's the one that got into trouble with the ring boys and stuff. The night they booed Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes has heard boos before. However, these boos were different. They crossed on the ocean and threatened to grow into an incident of international proportions. I'm thinking that's a Noki. That looks like a Tony Noki. Let's see. That is a Noki. Okay, it's when he faced Noki in Japan, I'm assuming. Noki's knowing them guys. I haven't seen them enough of his matches. Will Texas be superstar Graham's graveyard? Heroes abound in Texas lore. One of the largest figures from the frontier days was Wyatt Earp, who happens to be superstar Graham's boyhood hero. Like Earp, superstar takes no guff from foes as Mark Lewin learned. 
Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame member Mark Lewin. Beating the hell out of each other. Look at that. Tacking them with a chair. That was, it ain't like today where chairs get used all the time. Chairs didn't get used often back then. These great pictures. Oh. Brother tag teams, good or bad? The Love Brothers. The McGuire Twins. No Mascaras and El Sidelicio. I'm guessing. I'm, my Spanish is not real good. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Ken Patera, one night hitman for Captain Lou Albano. So this is when Patera was a heel. Okay. Patera with the blonde hair. This is before you know, he went to jail. Okay, here we go. Women at War. It's another apartment wrestling ad. Look at that. This is bad. Hopefully that's a bad wig. Okay, so we got two pages so far. These are always the longest things in here. Some more of the Tadler, some more back issues being sold. So we got two pages on apartment wrestling. A little more Tadler, a little more mailbag. Picture of Andre with his fro. Jerry, more of the Jerry Lawler stuff. Okay. Yeah, see, this is a 8mm projector. Super 8 and regular 8. Brass knuckle. Barbary Coast knuckle buckle. Lifts to make you taller. Yeah, like I really need lifts to make me any taller than I am. It's more of the scrapbook. Like I said, more back issues. It's a lot of back issues. Two more pages on the women apartment wrestling. Ja Louise had hoped that apartment wrestling could be the answer to her mental problems. She was unprepared for the arduous physical problems of apartment wrestling. However, Adrian holds her younger opponent to the floor with her left leg and digs her cat-like claws into her belly. Above. Ja Louise grimaces as her arms are nearly torn from their sockets. When it comes to inflicting pain, Adrian is a master. With intense concentration, the shapely blonde bends Ja Louise's leg beneath her body. So that's like, what, four pages now? Five pages! We've got another one. Here we go. Adrian is known by many as a breaker of hearts. Above, she tries to break Jeloise's arm. So that's what, five, yeah, five pages. More old ads. Six, seven pages. Bending Jeloise's arm behind her head, Adrian drives the brunette along the carpet, causing burns across her back. Ooh, carpet burns, not for fun. Jeloise's blue eyes are watery, but she refused to quit. She, convinc she was convinced that if she could turn this match around, she could turn her life around. More apartment wrestling ads. So we got like a pile. Oh, oh we got some more apartment wrestling. What we got here? Adrian leg, Adrian's leg muscles bulge as she propels her knee into Jeloise's inner thigh. In desperation, Jeloise tries to bite Adrian's belly. Jeloise's inexperience provides costly. Provide, prove very costly, sorry. As Adrian dives in for a chokehold, Jeloise defends herself by thrusting knees into the blonde's chest. Don't need a gun. And you see a lot of the similar ads, because it's only a couple months later, but man. And I've got one more, I just gotta find it, but yep, Sports Review Wrestling, June of 1980. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, give me that thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all the other stuff. Talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.